Good day, everyone. It's really good to see our people here today and welcome everyone to our innovation leadership story sharing. So this is some of the work of our innovation leadership special interest group, which is a group within a wider innovation network called ISPIM. And if you don't know about these things, have a look in the comments below this video and find out more about it. I'm Rob Sheffield and I'm joining you from Bristol in the UK and in Berlin. We have our co-host, Jörg Reckendrick. Hi, Jörg, welcome. Yeah, hello, uh, welcome to everybody here. So I'm Berlin based, as Rob said. I have a background as an artist and I'm deeply connected or I'm deeply uh, convinced how we are thinking about how to bring in the creative principles of art to the organizational world. So this is really an overlap, thinking through an organizational need and how can we challenge that need in terms of creativity and creative thinking. So if you're coming across this series for the first time, viewers, the, this story sharing project is aimed at understanding more about how organizations today are turning novel ideas into value and including what's the role of leadership in helping that to happen. So we are really, really delighted to have with us two very senior leaders from the Canadian company Telops. And we have first, we have the CEO and founder, Jean Giroux, Good morning to you, Jean. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for selecting us as your uh, first uh, in the series. And also we have from the same company, the Research and Development Director, Christoph Deutsch. Hello again, Christoph. Hi, everybody. It's a pleasure being with you uh, today. And I think let's, let's get on with it. I think, Jörg, let's hand yeah. over to you for the next part. Yeah, actually, Christoph and Jean, so we ask the interviews are in terms of bringing us an object which somehow is telling a story about the company. And in the preview, we, what we have seen, this is an object which is not only kind of a metaphor uh, for this company and its story, it's also rate the product. So can we take a look to that object here? Yeah, so uh, here's the object. Ah, all right. I mean, with an artistic view, I would say, well, I really love the the fine design, the colors, I can even see here the optical reflections, or oh, that's a little bit like a spaceship. Well, why have you chosen particular that one? So we didn't want to have just a, a box that uh, is going to be in, a, uh, in the laboratories of uh, scientists. We wanted to have an object that uh, has some curves, that has some uh, really nice uh, design. So we worked with uh, industrial designers to, uh, to get uh, to this uh, uh, really interesting uh, camera. So uh, uh, we wanted also to have something that uh, shows robustness. So you can see that the, 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 intra, the, the camera is still pretty uh, easy to, to take and uh, it's, it's a robust design. So that's what we wanted also to, uh, to have, to show the, the robustness and to show uh, the, um, uh, <coughs> the capabilities of, uh, of this uh, scientific, uh, scientific uh, instrument. I don't know, Jean, oh. if you want to add something about the, the, the design? We developed this product uh, following an early lead in these imaging systems uh, our first um, line of product was really innovative and, in a sense, revo revolutionary. Now, uh, with this camera, we were going into a, a red ocean, and we feared about, uh, obviously, going straight against a competitor. We had the know-how and the technology, but we didn't want to go straight on with a big multinational company into a price war. So we put a lot of thought from the beginning in this product and uh, everything that pertains to what the customer may perceive as value, including things like the packaging and the looks of it. And that's uh, why we're proud of this uh, camera because we think it looks good. And uh, we had put these values against the values of our competitor, not only in it, how it looked, but how it would be perceived. And we wanted something that looked different and modern because we really want to convey the idea that this was something different. And that's how we position ourselves. 
Super, thank you very much. It seems to be that design plays also an important role. It's not only the function, but it's also how the object itself appears, how maybe even a point of uh, uh, sensitivity, the emotional impact of an object. It's not only technique, it's also a good design. So it, it's a very, very interesting combination here, what we can see here. But this brings us straight forward to the question so about the business background. So how was actually the business or the, op, the, the technique, the object and the business idea uh, developed? How did it emerge originally? And can you describe so the basic functions that we have a kind of a summary of your story, how that all started and uh, developed further? We had the opportunity to develop a very innovative product uh, in, uh, the f in around 2005, 2010, which was really a specialty camera, which sells for say close to a million dollar. Uh, it was a small volume, difficult sales um, and long sales cycle because it was something that was completely different. And within the camera, we had the, the core, the heart was really uh, common to uh, infrared cameras. So it's like, um, I like to see it as uh, we had developed something that was like a color camera that had inside a black and white. And there was an established marketplace for black and white cameras and color cameras nobody knew about. So it was <clears throat> the opportunity we saw said, okay, can we make a better black and white camera and go into an established market where we would have opportunities already set forward by our competitors. Uh, one side of Telos, which is kind of different also from an innovation point of view is that we have roughly half of our R&D team is working on uh, contracts for customers. So we have customers that come to us to get something that's different, that's what's available on the market and they will pay for the engineering and the development and testing of this new product. They'll pay a premium for that. And typically they would leave us uh, with the intellectual property, which we can then uh, introduce into our commercial products. So in that sense, that's how we got going with the early customers, developed the product and in parallel developed the, the feature sets and bring it to the market. Uh, so we started, I guess, uh, selling these cameras in uh, uh, seven years ago, uh, mm -hmm. selling one or two, and now we're selling uh, around 100 per year. It's been a constant growth. So we now carry uh, a complete line of uh, cameras from high, de high, high number of colors to black and white. And, then every, and we have models in between. Uh, and the black and, one, uh, black and white ones are the fastest. So basically, this allows the customer to trade off speed for color. Just to, to add on the, on the technical uh, side, so uh, we have a very uh, highly educated staff uh, in uh, spectroscopy and uh, infrared imaging. And uh, one of the things that uh, they have brought was the, the way we do the calibration process. So uh, what comes out of our uh, camera is for each pixel we, have, uh, we are able to have a temperature. But to get this, uh, we have to uh, go through a calibration process. And uh, the way we are doing it is uh, very innovative and uh, different from what the competition is doing. And uh, so the customer doesn't need to uh, have its own calibration process. The camera, when it goes outside of uh, the, the, our facilities, is uh, permanently calibrated. So that's a, a huge differentiator uh, that we have also. Just give us a few examples of what your products help customers to do. So uh, with the very high speed camera uh, that gives a, a temperature information, that's really interesting because they are able to uh, get information that they have not seen up to now. So uh, when they want to develop a new materials, for example, to go to space, and see what type of impact uh, when, uh, if it hits something in space, they are able to simulate that and to see in terms of uh, rupture uh, where it goes. So that's one of the example. Of course, there are a lot of others. It's very interesting, Christoph. And also I was looking at your website and seeing things like 
how you use your products in environmental scanning, maybe of natural features like methane emission from lakes or volcanic mm -hmm. emissions, but also man-made systems like uh, water cooling systems. Is that all, that sounds right? The, the, that's all uh, the, the, the different uh, places where our instrumentation can be used. Of course, when we go to uh, gas detection like methane or things like that, then uh, we need to, uh, the, the different colors that uh, Jean mentioned uh, previously. But uh, this is part of uh, what we all can do with our uh, instrumentation. And that's the interesting part in terms of innovation. The fact that we brought a new technology that is able to do a lot of things, but people do not know up to now how to use it. So uh, that's really interesting to see uh, how they got from our very uh, big instrument, which is color, and uh, have been able after that to come with a smaller instrument that uses just two colors or things like that. And uh, so that's a way for us also to uh, develop our business. Since about 2012, the business has gone from 30 to about 100 people. Um, that you're selling, I think, Jean, as you said earlier, from a few units per year up to around about 100. Yes. Um, market share has gone up to 20, 25%, and you're in the top three in your market. 20% year on year growth up to kind of 2019. We know this year has been a bit, may perhaps been a bit different, but it's still massively impressive. Yeah, these figures are uh, on average uh, what we've seen. Yeah. So, the, and this has been fueled by this new product line that we launched in 2013, together with continuing the growth we had in other uh, parts of the business. What is the, what is your approach towards um, to manage or to facilitate the innovation process? We have over the years always maintained a mechanism to evaluate projects. Uh, so we may uh, at some point have five, 10 ideas and they all kind of uh, mature uh, together in a sense that uh, some will be in early phases of evaluation from a market, marketing point of view, uh, com competition analysis customer needs, and, uh, but it could also be in uh, technology development. And uh, when we put all of that together, and as I was saying, part of our R&D team is also doing contracts for customers. So we have this also to balance because obviously customer product uh, projects will take the lead uh, more often than not on our uh, own internal projects. So all of this needs to be balanced in the end, uh, it's an assessment that comes uh, in kind of a fluid way uh, between what is the capacity we have to tackle a project, uh, financials, the where we uh, sit with the existing product lines. Are we uh, looking for a leap? Are we looking for an evolution, something more subtle? So all of this is percolating. Uh, for the past uh, four or five years, we were having such uh, brainstorming sessions weekly. And uh, this allowed us to prepare what the next leap would be. I guess um, we have had this culture of innovation. It's part of our values. And uh, the way we've uh, kept the flame on is through uh, a few things. First, um, training. So I guess the core team, the leadership team, we've been working together uh, and sharing uh, readings and training and implementing some of this. So we have a, a gated portfolio process. We use uh, tools like the business model canvas. So one thing that we've done and uh, Yes, uh, Kyosef has been the, the owner of that, is that uh, we've pushed it a little bit further than I've seen elsewhere in that once we have a business case that will trigger a product development and launch, we maintain uh, the, the spreadsheet and the data, the analysis, 
over the, uh, the, 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 the sell or the production uh, phase of the product. So the product is in the market. We see, are we on track with what we had said we would do from a margin point of view? So, okay, are we getting the return on investment? The, the fact that uh, uh, Telops is very, uh, adapts a lot. So uh, the leadership team uh, being uh, the, the product line manager, the marketing manager, uh, Jean, uh, our CTO uh, uh, and the whole group, we uh, want to, we know about the techniques for doing innovation uh, in the books and things like that, but we adapt them to our reality. So the fact that we are able to uh, learn and to adapt, that's something very important. Also in terms of product development, uh, when you read the book, uh, you have the stage gate with each step and uh, before being able to launch the product, you have to have uh, some, uh, uh, risk reduction to, uh, that has to be done and so on. In our market, uh, we often cannot afford to wait until the product is validated until we launch it. So in some cases, we launch the product pretty early, which puts a lot of pressure on the engineering team, but that's the way we have been able to be successful. So not uh, following the rules of the book, but seeing how it uh, adapts to our market, to our reality, to our team. And uh, that, that, that's what, uh, what Telops is really uh, very, uh, um, can be very proud about. It's the way to learn and adapt. I mean, how would you characterize how you manage what you've described, you know, process, product, all of your attention around innovation? How, how do you manage that across your leadership team? So the market guys have their side, Christoph has his side, our CTO, who is one of the founders as well, well, he's got the in-depth knowledge and he acts through all of this, kind of uh, putting the hard pieces together. Mm -hmm. So in the end, that's, that's how we work. And I found in the past that if you do this type of uh, innovation, brainstorming in the corridor with the whole of the technical team, well, you, you lose your you lose your, your team because they'll start thinking, oh, well, maybe I can add this in this project and do this and do this. And then you have all kinds of waste happening because people just go and out of sync with the rest of the team to just uh, do stuff. So I've moved to a model where we do it uh, in a private meeting where everything is allowed. And we basically only uh, start projects when We've laid out the groundwork with a business model canvas and budget and a, a good uh, business, uh, business case. So I try to imagine that. Are you all sitting in a big conference room and you do this kind of a still work, everybody's writing down, take note, and then you start to share? Or I think so there is also a very practical point of view of how to get the job done. And therefore I'm very, or we are very curious to hear about that how you organize okay. yourself. So Christoph was uh, acting as the secretary and taking actions on his own to bring to his team, for example, to do uh, project evaluations. So often that would go into this because what we're trying to do is, is balance three things, the product cost, the development cost, and the forecast for volume. So okay, well, if all of this lines up properly, then we have a winner. But there are so many things changing all the time, let alone uh, pandemics, uh, that will require that you rebalance it, this portfolio rather frequently. So yearly is not, is not good enough. And uh, weekly was kind of uh, overdoing it. We changed the roles a bit to change the, the way we do it to, to make it more efficient and uh, we will have such meetings on a monthly basis. Uh, I would like to, to come back to something that uh, Jean uh, said uh, back uh, in uh, 2012, uh, when he put the, uh, he puts the vision saying, okay, we are going into the market of uh, infrared cameras and we are going to uh, have uh, 20 to 25% uh, shares in, uh, in a period of time of uh, five to six years. Uh, when he first uh, stated that, uh, many people around the table were looking and saying, okay, it's good to set the goals high, but uh, 
this time he's setting them really high. But that's something that uh, was maintained during the, the, the different years. And uh, we reached this goal. So that's really something that uh, the team and the, the, the whole TELOPS group has now in his background, knowing that even if we set some aggressive uh, targets, we are able to reach them. So that's very good uh, on this part. And uh, having the rigor to uh, maintain that over the years. So uh, that's uh, something that uh, uh, Jean uh, has uh, in this culture and uh, that is brought in the into the company, which is uh, sharing that with all the people. So um, is it someone in production, in the R&D team, in the uh, sales team? All the people know that, uh, that goal. So once a year, we take all the, the, the people from the company for a whole day where the leadership teams presents the plan for the next year, but also the vision for the future. That's uh, Jean's part where he, he, he sets the, the, the goals and where we are going to. And I believe that's something in the, uh, in the culture that we have, which really enables the innovation at uh, different places. So even in the production, uh, on the production side, uh, people are also innovative to finding new ways to produce our cameras and so on. So that's a, a whole mindset that uh, the, from the, the, the top going uh, into the, the, the whole team, that is something that is, uh, from my point of view, done very uh, well uh, by, uh, by Jean since the very beginning uh, of Telops. I think the more we hear you describe how it works, Christophe and Jean, the more we see the pieces come together from the opportunity spotting around the vision and the new product line, um, the, the discipline and the rigor with which you manage the whole innovation process, including, as you said, John, the sell part of it for the ROI, um, distributing and sharing the capabilities amongst people so it's not too dependent on anyone. So you clearly seem to have developed capabilities to repeat this again and again and again and that's why you have the results that you shared with us and rob i think i really think that is uh, most interesting from my point of view because i mean repeating something again and again and again so it becomes a kind of a an attitude it doesn't have uh, the, i do not have to think about this all over it again and then sometimes i call the kind of I wouldn't call it a process, kind of a ritual, which an organization creates. And the ritual feels good in place in terms of, oh, we did it with success and we played again. We receive this. We see if we have to adjust that ritual to the demands of the situation. So that is a, a most fascinating listening to the story of Jean and Christophe. In the end, I have to say that my role ultimately as CEO has been to make the final call. And if there was a, for example, a choice between two projects, which was um, difficult, well, they knew uh, I had made the call and that the decision was was made and they, they, they follow it. And it's, uh, it's, it's important that uh, in the end, somebody is able to make a decision. Also something that's, uh, that we've done, which I'm proud of, in a sense, and not proud in the other, is that stop project uh, halfway. So when we've uh, started things and made decisions, and it's not because we started a project that we stopped the analysis and uh, let it go until uh, un until the end. So it's, it's something that we do is uh, put it back uh, in competition with the others. And if there's something unforeseen or a competitor with a new product or something else that we see which is different or a new better opportunity then we've killed one major project like this so I guess we did it orderly finished the parts that were started uh, put that in the in the freezer in case we started again but uh, <laughs> just uh, basically uh, that's something we've done so of course and and it's a challenging time isn't it John and Christoph here we are 2020 COVID is still going through its waves in the context of all we've talked about you know around your evolving innovation leadership what what is next for you at Telops? A, that's a difficult question I'm really proud on how um, my uh, operations team uh, have reacted so we've had to take quick decisions 
Uh, I was very happy with the teamwork that we've shown, people taking their part of it and uh, the way we shared. Obviously, Christoph's got a large team and uh, everybody settled quickly into uh, working remotely. Our manufacturing team, as uh, we've worked ways to keep manufacturing going. Uh, our finance team has uh, sailed through all the process of getting grants and government support and all of that in a very efficient and orderly way. And even from my point of view, uh, say on, on top of the tower, it was uh, going so well that I didn't feel the need to, uh, to work with the team so much because they, I was agreeing automatically with the decisions that were being made and there was a great consensus. Now, how we're gonna adapt to this, the, the biggest concern I have is uh, obviously um, keeping uh, the culture, keeping the engagement of the team working remotely. Thanks a lot for that, uh, Jean. I mean, so I would uh, finally ask a question to Christoph. So what do you think as a key lever of innovation for Tillops? So what should Tillops really concentrate on? Is it about process, product, people? I mean, customers, clients. So what, what do you think so is a key lever for um, actually going on with the innovation dynamic of, of the company? what we have to be careful about uh, with uh, all this remote work is uh, keeping the culture and keeping the, the people uh, still uh, being in line with what the customer really needs. So uh, that's something very, very important. And uh, in our strategic planning, what uh, one of the points that, uh, that came out is how are we going to um, bring the uh, customer needs into uh, our R&D team, which is growing now. So uh, that's uh, something very important that we will focus on. Uh, being able to have quick uh, uh, cycles with customers. So uh, that's what made our success also in the past, as Jean mentioned previously. Uh, being able to uh, uh, work with the customer, understand what he needs, and even very early in the in the process, being uh, using a, an instrument that is not perfectly working, but getting the feedback from this customer, uh, that's really uh, what we are working on. So, uh, all this uh, design thinking approach, minimal viable product, uh, these are the things that we want to integrate uh, to integrate in our larger team that we have now. Thank you both so much. Uh, we could explore more, but we can't really because you have other work to go and do, and so do we. But we really appreciate your time and thoughts. You've given a lot of insights. So thank you both very, very much. Thank you for my side as well. That was very insightful. Thanks. Thank you very much for the opportunity to, to have this discussion with you, and I hope this is helpful to others as well.